started in today's lecture we are going to talk about wood and wood is very important civil engineering material uh, since it's the earliest construction material used by mankind so the first material to be used by the mankind for construction is wood uh, for many reasons the mankind cho choose to to, uh, to use the wood because it's uh, available and of course uh, it's uh, it's not expensive and easy to use and it's du durable of course if uh, probably design if we design it in a good way then it's going to have a good durability and still today continue to be uh, an important civil engineering material so even today wood is important uh, civil engineering material so we can use uh, wood in many uh, applications for example here we have bridge uh, we have uh, 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 utility poles we have floors we have roofs trusses and piles so we could use uh, wood in all of this and in order uh, to use wood efficiently efficiently it is important to understand its basic properties and limitation so in order to understand how to use the wood it's important to understand the properties and the uh, limitation like just any other civil engineering materials so first we need to understand the classification of trees we know that uh, wood is made from trees so we need to know the uh, basic cl classification of the trees <coughs> first we have the uh, endogenous okay and we have the exogenous we have two main types it depends on the type of the uh, growth uh, first what does it mean by endogenous the endogenous trees such as palm trees like this one okay we know the palm trees uh, in this type of the uh, trees they grow with intertwined fibers so like you can see here they grow <coughs> like intertwined fibers and the wood from endogenous trees is not generally used for engineering applications so the trees uh, the woods from the uh, palm trees were not going to use them in engineering applications while the exogenous trees the fibers grow from the center so we're going to, the fiber is going to uh, grow from the center outward from the center then outside by, by adding concentric layers or we call this annual rings have like rings every year new ring <coughs> is going to be created and that uh, that type of exogenous uh, trees is more predictable in terms of engineering properties not like the in, in, in indigenous uh, trees okay the exogenous trees itself it has uh, two main uh, types we have deciduous and we have conifers uh, the deciduous is going to produce hard wood while the uh, conifers is going to produce uh, soft woods in general when we say soft woods uh, it, it means that the trees is softer less dense and easier to cut than the hard woods okay so again here we have this chart show us the uh, uh, different types of trees we have exogenous we have endogenous endogenous just like it did the palm trees exogenous this one which we use in engineering application we have the conifers this one soft woods we have the deciduous this one is hard woods <coughs> the conifers also it has other name which is evergreen this one is widely used for construction so the conifers this one is widely used in construction because this one uh, grow in the large stands the stand is going to be large and that is going to permit uh, economical harvesting they mature rapidly uh, and also uh, the, which make them renewable uh, resource so in in very short time they uh, they grow okay which means that if i'm going to cut the trees uh, i'm going to wait for a short time uh, then I'm going to get another tree and that is going to make them renewable resource while the deciduous trees the other one here this one is expensive 
and slow growing. It takes time in order to grow. And we use this mainly in furniture. So the conifers, we use them in uh, engineering applications, while the deciduous, we use them in uh, furniture. This one is a hardwood, takes a lot of time to grow and it's expensive. This one is cheap and it takes uh, less time uh, to grow. Uh, here, we, it's important to understand the con concentric layers. We say that the, everything start, the fiber start from the center, and then we are, we are going to have annual rings outward. Actually, if you know the numbers of the rings, you will be able to know the age of the tree. Okay, so if you count the number of the annuals, we call this annual rings. So if you count the number of the annual rings, you will be able to know the age of the tree. So the uh, concentric layers in the stem of exogenous trees are, uh, are called growth rings or annual rings. And the annual ring itself, it composed of two parts. We have the early wood or the light ring. We have the late wood. So each and every one of the ring it has two parts. We have the early wood and we have the late wood. So if we're gonna cut small part here and assume this one is the direction of the growth this direct this is the direction of the growth then we are going to have uh, late wood then early wood then late wood and early wood the early wood this one is a rabbit spring growth it's going to uh, rub it aggressively in the spring and it composed of hollow thin walled cells on the other hand the late wood the dark ring this one is denser summer growth of a thick wall cells uh, which are much harder and stronger so this one much harder and stronger <laughs> and darker okay and it's made from thick walled cells while the early wood this one is uh, lighter and uh, this one is a uh, hollow thin wall this one grow in the spring and this one grow in the summer also, it's very important to know about the main structural feature of tree stem. OK, we are going to start from the center. We say that the, this type of trees uh, start from the center, then uh, centric uh, layers is going to be uh, uh, grown each year. So uh, take a small slice here. This one, assume this one is the center. The center is here. We are going to call the center the uh, pith. So here we have the pith, the center, or the center stem of the, the tree. Then we are going to have the hard wood. This part here is the hard wood. And this one is the uh, darker. And this one provides structural support for the tree. So the tree takes its structural support from the uh, hard wood. Then we are going to have the sap wood. This one is the lighter, uh, okay? And this one is going to transport the sap, the food of the of the tree, okay? Then we are going to have the cambium. The cambium is very thin layer. So here we have the uh, hard wood, this part. Then we have the the sap, and then we have the uh, cambium. Cambium is a very thin layer. OK, uh, this uh, is the location of the wood growth here where a new uh, annual ring is going to be uh, created. Finally, we have the, the bark, the bark, we have the inner bark and we have the outer bark, the bark itself. We have the inner bark and we have the outer bark it is the main structural feature of the uh, tree uh, stem. And it is very important to know about one of the uh, most important information information about the property of the wood. The wood is anisotropic. OK, uh, this is strange. Uh, and I think this is the first time for you uh, to find something uh, or material like this. Remember when we uh, dealt with the strings of material uh, before we uh, uh, bark on any definition or uh, di differentiation or any something like that, we are going to say that the material 
is going to be plastic and the material is isotropic and so on before the starting the uh, derivation is going to give you some information one of the, of the information they, they will say that the material is isotropic so what does it mean by isotropic and an isotropic so for example if you have a cube here made from concrete for example if you are going to uh, apply, if you, you want to test the uh, uh, compression, uh, compressive uh, strength, for example, now you uh, apply, <laughs> you apply the load from this direction, for example, okay, and you fix this part and you apply a force from here. You got the value. What if I ap apply the load from that direction and fix the value, or someone else is going to fix this part here and apply the load here? Will it make any difference? Of course, it's not going to make any difference, right? Even if you have a small a difference, it's going to be very small. So this is not the case for the wood. In the wood, any direction, it has different properties. Any direction, it has different properties, not like the steel or concrete or something like that. This is different from any other uh, material. That what does it mean by uh, wood is an uh, is an iso uh, uh, isotropic? So in the wood we have three main directions. We have the longitudinal direction. This one is parallel to the long axis of the tree. So <coughs> if you have the long <coughs> axis of the tree, uh, the longitudinal is, go longitudinal is going to be parallel to the long axis. This one is the strongest axis and the least shrinkage. So this one is not going to have reduction in the uh, volume or is going to uh, went through uh, 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 small uh, uh, reduction in the uh, volume. Then we have the radial direction. The radial direction, <coughs> this one is perpendicular to the growth rings. So if this one is the growth ring, rings, then the radial is going to be perpendicular to the growth rings. Okay. Uh, finally, we have the tangential. This one is tangent to the growth length. So this one is going to be uh, tangent to the growth length. This one is the weakest <laughs> and the most uh, shrinkage. Okay, so uh, uh, when we say wood is anisotropic, which means that the properties in this direction is different than the properties from that direction, and it's different from the properties of that direction. Okay, that is why the wood is unique uh, uh, material. So the properties is going to change with the direction. That's what does it mean by anisotropic. Yeah, yeah, here I have the longitudinal direction. Here I have the radial direction. This one is perpendicular to the uh, growth link, uh, ring. Uh, here I have the tangential. This one is tangent to the growth rings. So in the wood directions, Influence strength, modulus of elasticity, thermal expansion, conductivity, shrinkage, and extra, etc. It is going to affect many properties. Then we have the chemical composition of the wood. Wood is composed of uh, cellulose, okay, and we have lig uh, lignin, and we have hemicellulose, we have extra, extra graffitis. And we have ash producing minerals. So here uh, the wood is composed of many uh, chemical uh, compounds, but the cellulose is the account for approximately 50% of the wood substance by weight. So this one is the most important uh, chemical part of the wood. Also, it's very important to understand the relation uh, with the uh, moisture condition of the wood. Uh, in the uh, when we discussed the aggregates, for example, we discussed the uh, moisture condition. Uh, we say that the aggregate it has voids through which it can absorb water. Okay, so here also uh, the uh, wood can absorb water. So it's very important to understand the uh, moisture content uh, for a specimen of a wood. So. How I'm going to determine the moisture content for a wood? So if you have a small piece of wood, <coughs> then the moisture content is going to be 
the weight uh, of, of the uh, wood minus the weight of weight uh, of the wood dry over the weight of the wood dry. So you are going to take a uh, sample from the wood with its water. OK, you are going to measure it. Then uh, you need to uh, to put the sample in the oven so that the uh, uh, the sample is going to be completely dry. Then if you uh, substitute uh, W M minus W D uh, D, you are going to get the water content. Then divided by uh, the weight dry, then you are going to get the moisture content. You need, of course, to multiply by 100% to convert it to be <coughs> a percentage. <coughs> the uh, moisture condition of, <coughs> of the wood, uh, the weight, the shrinkage, and the strings uh, are all a function of the moisture content of the wood. Also, the moisture content is going to affect many properties uh, of the wood. But we need to understand the, uh, the types of the moisture. We have two types of moisture in wood. We have bound water and we have free water. Uh, here we have uh, a magnified wood section, like you can see here. We have water on the uh, wall cells and we have water inside the cell cavities. We have two types of moisture content, one inside the uh, cell cavities and one uh, uh, in the cell walls. OK, we call this uh, bound water and we call this free water. So the bound water held tightly in the uh, uh, cell walls here. And the wood experience a volume change upon a change in the bound <laughs> water. So any change in the bound water, then uh, we are going to have uh, a volume uh, change accordingly. OK, while for the free water, the wood does not experience a volume change with a change in free water. So if this free water <laughs> is going to change, the wood is not going to experience any volume change is the difference between the uh, bound water and the free water and their uh, uh, effect on the uh, volume change uh, in the wood. Also, we have the uh, fiber saturation point, FSB. OK, the uh, moisture content uh, when cells are completely saturated with the bound water, but no free water inside the cell cavities. So in this case, we have uh, bound water. Uh, the uh, wood is saturated with the bound water, but we don't have any free water. We call this moisture content fiber saturation point. OK, so uh, again, the bound water, uh, the held tightly in the cell cavities, would shrink, uh, shrink it, uh, shrinks on removal. So if you uh, <laughs> if we lose or we remove any amount of bound water, then uh, we are going to have shrinkage, not like the free water. Uh, while the free water, water inside the cell cavities does not affect the shrinkage. We already uh, mentioned this. The uh, uh, FSB, the fiber saturation point, is going to be between 21 and 32 percent. So see uh, moisture content so it's going to be between 21 and 32 percent so if the moisture content above the fsb uh, that is going to change uh, only the wet uh, weight of the uh, wood okay and if it's below the fsb then small changes strongly affect all the physical and mechanical properties OK, so if the moisture content above the uh, FSB, uh, changes affect only wet weight. While if it's below the FSB, then small changes, even if you have small changes, strongly affect all physical and uh, mechanical properties. So here we have this graph in order to understand the relation between the moisture content with the three main axes. We say that we have the longitudinal direction, we have the tangential direction, and we have radial uh, direction. Here 
we have tangential, radial, and longitudinal. longitudinal. Uh, here we have the uh, moisture content in the x-axis, and in the y-axis we have the shrinkage. Okay, like you can see here, when the uh, the value of the uh, uh, moisture content is zero, then the the percentage of the shrinkage is high. Actually, it's very high in the tangential direction, and it's medium in the radial direction. And here it's almost zero in the longitudinal direction. Then when the uh, moisture content increase, the value of the shrinkage is going to decrease. And when we almost got at, at, <coughs> at the FSB point, the uh, fiber saturation point here, then the shrinkage is going to decrease for the all direction. But like you can see here, the tangential direction, like we mentioned earlier, is going to be affected uh, strongly by the moisture content, not like the longitudinal direction. That is why we say that the wood is anisotropic. They are going to uh, be affected differently in different <laughs> directions. So uh, largest shrinkage is in the tangential direction. So this one is going to uh, experience the uh, largest shrinkage when we have a change in the moisture content. And the smallest shrinkage is in the longitudinal direction. This one is going to experience the smallest shrinkage. Okay, and uh, here we are going to have zero shrinkage above the FSB. So after the uh, FSB point, we are not going to have any shrinkage, whatever uh, the direction. Okay. So volume change of wood above FSB, no shrinkage, swell change, only uh, cell wall change, uh, change in uh, volume. Uh, we have only weight, uh, weight changes, okay? So after the F uh, FSB, we have only weight, weight changes. In the wood production, uh, we have many steps. First, we have the harvesting, then we have the sowing, then we have the seasoning uh, or the drying, then we have the servicing or the planning. This one is optional. We have the grading, and finally, we have the pre uh, servative treating. This one, in order to prevent the uh, uh, insects and the fungi uh, from degrading the, uh, the wood. We have uh, wood uh, products for construction, like the dim dimensional lumber, look like that. This one is the dimensional lumber. The uh, size is <laughs> small compared to other. It's, uh, it has a thickness between 50 millimeter minimum to one, uh, 125 millimeter maximum. And this one is going to be uh, uh, sewn on all four sides. So the fall four sides is going to be uh, sewn. Okay. And is this one used for light framing? So if you are going to have light framing, then uh, the lumber is a good option for you. But if you want to uh, construct heavy framing, then you need to use heavy timber. In this one, the cross section is going to be 150 by 150 or 200 uh, time 200 millimeter or larger uh, like this one here this one is is larger than that one we use this one for heavy framing while this one for <laughs> light framing also we have the round stock this one consists of post and poles and this one used for building poles marine pi piling and utility poles so we use this one in uh, uh, places like here, maybe in the center or something like that. Finally, we have the engineer wood products. This one consists of products manufactured by bonding together wood strands, veneers, lumbers, and other form of wood fibers. So we, uh, you are familiar with wood fiber like this one. Then we are going to bond them together, put them, put them like that and we call this engineering wood products like the play wood is a famous one famous engineered uh, wood products 
so we are gonna uh, get benefit from the strands and the veneers we are going to bond them to get together by chemical uh, uh, bonder uh, so that they are going to take this shape uh, nowadays the the use of uh, engineered wood products becoming a lot here we have a pictures uh, uh, here we have a pictures for lumber and heavy timber and here we have a picture for uh, frame this one is a heavy frame not light frame here we have many applications have been done using the the wood <clears throat> now let's talk about the physical properties of the wood first we're going to talk about the specific gravity and the density the specific gravity of the cell wood the cell celsius is 1.5 regardless of the species so regardless of the species whatever the type of the uh, tree the uh, cell wood is going to uh, the, uh, the Celsius, the specific gravity of the Celsius is 1.5. And the specific gravity is an excellent indicator of the amount of the material and the properties, especially in dry wood. If the value is close to 1.5, the specific gravity of the dry wood is close uh, to 1.5. Uh, mean, uh, it means more cell walls, which is denser and stronger. And regarding the density, the density between 300 to 700 kilogram per cubic meter. And also we have the thermal expansion. Uh, previously mentioned that the wood is an anisotropic material, which means that the properties uh, differ in each direction. And regarding the thermal expansion, uh, about five to 10 times, the thermal expansion is greater ac across the, the grain than parallel to it. So across the, the grain, the thermal expansion is between five to 10 times larger uh, across the grain than the other direction. So uh, when you apply heat to wood, what will happen? We have first, uh, the wood is going to expand uh, from the thermal expansion. The length is going to increase. Then uh, it's going to shrink from the moisture loss. Then after a while, the, the wood is going to suffer moisture loss and uh, the value of the moisture content is going to be below FSB. And in this case, the, uh, uh, the uh, wood is going to shrink again. And regarding the electrical properties, the wood is a <laughs> good <laughs> electrical insulator in general. But th that is going to be affected by the moisture content. More water is better uh, uh, as electrical conductor. So if the, mo the moisture content increase, then the wood is going to be good electrical conductor. If the uh, moisture content uh, is decreased, then the wood is going to be good electrical insulator. Uh, regarding the mechanical properties, the mechanical properties is very important. We have done and or we have seen uh, how to conduct mechanical properties for different type of material. <laughs> this time we need to know the mechanical properties for the wood. So in order to uh, design the, the wood, you need to understand the mecha mechanical properties. So we could say that the mechanical properties is just like a prerequisite for a proper design of food structure. First, we have the modulus of elasticity. Uh, we know that in order to get the modulus of elasticity, we need to take a piece uh, of the material and then we are going to apply tension or compression and then we are going to measure the uh, force and the uh, elongation. Then we are going to determine the uh, stress and the strain. And we say that the wood is anisotropic, which means that uh, the, the, the modulus of elasticity is going to be uh, different in each direction. Here, uh, <coughs> this test has been conducted uh, parallel to the, to the grain. Okay, this one has been conducted parallel to the grain, the long longitudinal and axis. And the behavior, it was just like that. The behavior is going to be similar, but the value uh, of the modulus of elasticity is going to be different. So it's going to be linear up to a certain limit. After that, uh, we're going to have non-linear behavior before the failure. Is uh, uh, how uh, the stress strain diagram look for the uh, wood. Okay, and of course, the modulus of elasticity is the slope of the linear portion. And that value depends on the species variation. It depends on the moisture content. It depends on the specific gravity 
and of course it depends on the direction of the grain. Uh, regarding the strings uh, properties, again, the strings properties is going to vary uh, widely because of uh, anisotropy and the uh, moisture content and the defects. Okay, uh, the tensile strings in the longitudinal direction, the direction that parallel to the grain, is more than 20 times the tensile strength in the uh, radial direction. So the, the tensile strength is the strongest in the longitudinal direction and it's about 20 times than the, uh, the tensile strings in the radial direction, which is perpendicular to the grain. Also, the tensile strings parallel to the grain is larger than the compressive strings in the same direction. So if in the same direction, the tensile strings is larger than the compressive strings. So in the wood, the tensile strings is larger than the compressive strings in the same direction. So here we have common strength properties for the wood, of course, the modulus of rupture, in bending, <coughs> the compressive strength parallel and perpendicular to the grain, the tensile strength parallel to the grain, and the shear strength parallel to the grain. Also, it's very important to talk about the load duration because here we have strange phenomena regarding the, uh, the wood because wood can support a higher load of a short duration than a sustained load. For example, if you, uh, if you have a piece of, uh, of wood and then you apply a force to it, then the, the capacity after 10 minutes is going to be reduced. Okay, uh, if the, let's say that in the beginning, the, the strength is two. Okay, then after 10 minutes, the strength is going to be 1.6. After seven days, the strength is going to be 1.3. After two months, the strength is going to be 1.2. After 10 years, the strength is going to be 1. Which means that after 10 years uh, of sustained load, the, the capacity of the wood is going to be reduced by half. Okay? So uh, this is a very strange uh, phenomenon in the, the wood. It can support a higher load of a short time. For a short time, it can the capacity is high, but after a long time, then the capacity is going to be reduced, like you can see here. That is why we generally we uh, we design for a load duration of 10 years in the design. So if you if you are going to design a wood, you are going to design for a, a duration of 10 years. Okay, uh, if you wanna, if you are not go going to wait for 10 years to know the capacity. Uh, here you have the factors and you can use those factors in order to know the uh, factor of safety. Also, we have the damping capacity. Uh, when we say damping is the phenomenon in which the uh, amplitude of the variation in a material decreases with the time. OK, so the uh, vibration damping like sh uh, shock absorber. When we say that the material has good damping, which means that it can absorb the, the shock. Okay, for example, if you have, if the building uh, is going to be hit by earthquake, then they are not, they are going to absorb that shock. Okay, <coughs> so <laughs> the vibration damping for the wood uh, increases with the moisture content up to FSB. So when the moisture content increase, the damping process is going to increase as well. And uh, uh, surprisingly, the damping capacity for the wood is 10 times greater, greater than the structural metal, which means that uh, the wood structure uh, damping vibration much better than the metal. So the wood, it has good resistance for damping than the, uh, than the steel and the aluminum and so on. Uh, now we need to talk about the uh, mechanical testing itself how to test which type of uh, test should be conducted in order to know the <laughs> mechanical properties of the wood. <coughs> we have two main techniques, okay? Uh, testing of a timber of uh, structural sizes, okay? Which means that we are gonna uh, test the, uh, the, 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 the same size that is going to be used in the site, or you can take representative sample which means that you are going to take only small uh, sample, okay? 
Uh, so which one is important? Of course, testing the actual size uh, is very important than the representative, okay? Because this one is going to be uh, close to reality. So testing of structural size members is more important, more applicable to the design values. Uh, we have tests like flexural, <laughs> we have the flexural test, we have the compression test, we have the tension test. Uh, the the uh, most important test is the flexural test uh, is more uh, commonly used than the other test, mainly because of the, uh, the, the tensile strength of the wood is uh, the, the, the most dominant value. Here we have example for flexural uh, test. Here we, we, we have an actual size of the wood and here we put a uh, force in the uh, middle so that we can determine uh, the value of the flexural strength. Okay, so the test look like here we have a representative sample. If you want to take a small sample, so here we have a representative sample. Of course, uh, remember uh, we, for, exa for example, if you want to conduct uh, comp compressive strength, uh, this one, is, for example, should be parallel to the grain, and you need to another one which is perpendicular to the grain because we say that the wood is anisotropic. Uh, the uh, properties is going to be different from one direction to another. So each and every test should be uh, first uh, conducted parallel to the grain and also should be conducted uh, perpendicular to the grain. Here, for example, for tension test should be uh, perpendicular, perpendicular to the grain and also should be parallel to the grain. So uh, finally, we need to talk about the organisms that, uh, that degrade the wood. Uh, the wood can experience degradation due to attack of fungi, bacteria, insect, or marine organisms. Like that, the, the wood is susceptible to uh, fungi and uh, insects, and uh, insects from the marine, and that could degrade the wood. Okay. First, <coughs> we have the fungi. Uh, the most form of uh, decay and sap stain are a result of fungal growth. So the most damage that you could see is going to be as a result of, of fungi. Okay, so fungi, in order to exist, you need to have a food, you need to have a proper range of temperature, you need to have a moisture, and you need to have oxygen. So if you want to get rid of the fungi, you need to make sure that one of these is not uh, existing. Also, we have insects, we have the beetles, and we have the uh, termites. This one are the most common would attack in insects. And also we have uh, uh, marine organisms. These organisms are most, uh, almost totally confined to salt or brackish waters. And finally, we have the bacteria. The bacteria cause the wet wood and the uh, black uh, hard wood in living trees and a general degradation of a lumber. So here we have the bacteria that is going to cause the black hard wood. Here we have the termite damage. Here we have the <laughs> beetle uh, damage. Here we have damage due to fungi. And here we have a damage due to uh, marine uh, insects. Uh, finally, in order to uh, prevent the wood from all of this, we have two types of solutions. We have petroleum-based solution, and we have waterborne uh, preservative, uh, which is made from salts. Okay. Uh, the petroleum-based uh, solution, this one is, is very effective, but this one uh, is environmentally sensitive. It's going to hurt the environment. Uh, usually, we use uh, this petroleum-based uh, solution where human contact is not a concern. So if, you, if the human contact is not concerned, it's not a concern. You can use the petroleum-based solution. Okay, so the application include utility poles, rail uh, road ties and retaining wall, uh, places where human cannot uh, be in touch with it. Uh, regarding the other one, which is made from salts, salt ba based, the advantage of the waterproof preservative over the oil based are the cleanliness and its ability to be painted. So this one is clean, which means that it's not going to hurt the environment and also you, uh, we can uh, paint it. Okay. Uh, the disadvantage of, of this uh, type of solution uh, is their removal by leaching. Okay, you know, leaching 
uh, so this one it has a problem with lesion often after it has been painted uh, it's going to be leached when exposed to moisture condition over uh, long uh, periods of time okay so uh, i'm going to stop here if you have uh, any uh, questions uh, regarding the wood please uh, ask me